So ankylosing spondylitis, what's the definition? It's chronic inflammation uh, in the axial skeleton, which is the spine. This means spine. That affects the sacroiliac joints. If you don't know what the sacroiliac joints is, uh, watch the last video. And the spine. So it's inflammation, chronic inflammation in the spine and the SI joints mainly. And the hallmark is bilateral sacroiliitis. That's the hallmark feature. The epidemiology is the onset is late adolescent or early adulthood. So from, you know, 15, 16 to 30 about. And males, more than females. Males get it way more than females. It's more common in whites. The genetic marker is the HLB27. About 90% of all patients with AS have that HLB27 positive result. The mechanism, the exact mechanism is unknown, but we know that there's some kind of inflammation of the synovial membrane and synovial parts of the joints. There's inflammation with intimal cell hyperplasia. So these cells are undergoing hyperplasia to respond to some kind of stress due to the inflammation. There's lymphocytes and plasma cells that come into the area. So let's talk about how AS is similar and different than rheumatoid arthritis. They both have synovial inflammation that can lead to the destructions of the articular cartilage and ultimately lead to ankylosis. Ankylos ankylosis means fusion, fusion of a joint. So in ankylosing spondylitis, it's more common in males. There's absence of rheumatoid nodules, so you don't have rheumatoid no nodules. So in ankylosing spondylitis, RF negative, patients do not have rheumatoid factor, but in rheumatoid arthritis, patients do have rheumatoid factor. About 85, 80% of the time, they, they, have, they have it, rheumatoid factor. The sites that in, of involvement in ankylosing spondylitis is the bilateral SI joint, lumbar vertebra, thoracic vertebra, and cervical vertebra, so the spine and the SI joints. What are the clinical manifestations? You have, you have skeletal involvement, it's some kind of insidious onset, it's not, it doesn't really happen after a trauma, you just kind of wake up and through over time it just starts getting worse and worse and worse. You have back pain and tenderness. The first site of involvement is the SI. Initially it's asymmetrical. And so we talked about, you know, here's the sacrum and here's the spine. And so usually just one side starts getting inflammation or pain, but then ultimately it will, will go to both sides. So when it's one-sided, one-sided, it, it, it could be an infection, it could be a tumor, it could be a, like a bone tumor that's just destroying this joint so it only hurts on one side. So... Initially, it might be confusing where you're thinking, well, it might be something else, but over time, it will go to both sides. The persistent symptoms for last, uh, half the last three, at least three months, you have morning stiffness, stiffness so when the patient wakes up in the morning, ah, it's kind of have back pain, but it improves with exercise, so when you exercise, the pain goes down. The lumbar lordosis decrease and thoracic kyphosis increases. So as you can kind of see, the spine having effects on the spine. The cervical ankylosis, so the fusion of the cervical spine develops in 75% of the patients who have AS for 16 years or more. Wow, that's kind of interesting. So if you have AS for 16 years or more, 75% of those patients will have fusion of the complete cervical spine. Lumbar spine or lower cervical is the most common site of fracture. And enthesitis, an inflammation process occurs at the site of the insertion of the muscles. So if you have a muscle here, say this is a muscle, and it's attaching to some bone, where that tendon inserts into that bone, you kind of have an inflammation of these, of these insertions here of this tendon. That's called enthesitis or enthesopathy. Um, tenderness over the is ischial tuberosity greater trochanter, ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine, and the iliac crest. You have hip and shoulder involvement, in, mostly in the juvenile kids. 
and you see a respiratory restriction with limited chest expansion. Why is that? Well, because everything's fusing back there. So as you have your spine here, the ribs will come around and articulate with the spine. Well, if everything's fusing up, all those joints are going to fuse up. You're going to have no motion. So that's why they can have respiratory infection. Another common, uh, what I want to talk about here is with this fracture is you're thinking, well, why does the spine fracture? Well, if, you know, all these vertebrae here, your spine vertebrae, are fusing up and there's no motion in the joint, let's say there's a big force right here, well, the, the joints can kind of help receive that impulse, receive that that force, but there's no movement here, and so this this will just break open and there'll be a break right here. And so it's very common to see these kind of, uh, well, once this fusion happens, you can be at a higher risk for a fracture. Once the restrictive lung disease pattern kind of results, you see chest uh, expands and decreases, and the patient develops di diaphragmatic breathing where the stomach goes in and out because the diaphragm is the only thing that can cause an increase and decrease in pressure for, for oxygen exchange. And so the, you kind of see thoracic spine involvement of all these joints. The extra skeletal involvement, other complaints include fatigue, weight loss, low-grade fever. You can have uh, acute iritis or iridocyclitis, just eye, eye inflammation. And that's the most common skeletal, extra skeletal manifestation. And AS is more progressive in Rider syndrome. The eye inflammation is more common in Rider syndrome than in AS. You can have cardiac problems, inflammation of the aorta leading to fibrosis. You can have conduction defects inside the heart where the Purkinje fibers and the nerve signals aren't you know, working like they should. You have apical pulmonary fibrosis at the top of your lungs, you can have some fibrosis there. You can have difficulty breathing, some coughing, amyloidosis. You can have a neurological, some neurological uh, problems. You can have cauda equina syndrome, which is a uh, compression of the sacral nerves. You can have a C2, C1, C2 subluxation, a partial dislocation. The lab findings, you can have uh, uh, you positive for the HLA B27, 90%. That's a great, uh, great test, but it is expensive to run. So, but there's should be plenty of other things that will help you rule in the other the diagnosis. They have an increased ESR and a C-reactive protein, anemia, normal chromic, normal cytic type of anemia, and the RF factor is negative, and so is the ANA, the anti nuclear body nuclear antibodies so both of those are negative and last but not least the radiographic findings you have SI joint narrowing it's symmetric and ultimately it may lead to fusion you can have pseudo widening of the joint space pseudo means faults so the joint space might appear to be widening but it's actually not the subchondral bone uh, reabsorption and, and blurring of the subchondral bone. You can have erosion sclerosis, calcification leading to ankylosis, and you have the characteristic bamboo spine. So bamboo is pathognomonic for ankylosing spondylitis. So here's some bamboo, so you can kind of know what bamboo looks like. And then here's the spine. So you can kind of see fusion of these joints, how it's kind of coming over and fusing, and you're fusing in the back, it's fusing in these joints. So you can kind of see how they can, some radiologist or anatomist thought, well, it looks like some bamboo. Let's call it some bamboo spine. So, but that that's kind of in the literature and pathognomonic for ankylosing spondylitis. You can have ossification of the anterior spinal ligament and ankylosis of the apophyseal joint leading to complete fusion, kind of just what we talked about. Syndesmophyte formation, uh, squaring of the lumbar vertebras, anterior concavity, so instead of it kind of like this, it just come, becomes more straight. Uh, reactive bone sclerosis. So you can kind of see some sclerosis here. 
and squaring and fusion of the vertebral bodies, kind of what we just talked about, and you get some osteopenia, osteopenia, some bone washout. Okay, that's ankylosing spondylitis. I went over it quite, quite quickly. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but you can review that and watch it over and over if you need to.